other 20, 30, 40 lives that would have been lost. We are at the point of critical loss right now. We are at the point of death. The church is standing at the door of death, physical death, not spiritual death. You're born again. You will live forever. But your destiny, your future, your rewards here on earth, here on earth will be lost. Will be lost. The fire of God will set the whole of the house of the Lord on fire. The entire church, not just the buildings, but the people. Every born again Christian in the very near future will have to face the consuming, destructive fire of God that will come to test you and burn right through you. Whatever is inside me, not the nature we were born in, our deeds of sin, the things we do wrong, the things we do not repent of, the way we do Christianity, which is a blasphemous system against the Lord. That whole thing is going to be burnt into smithereens and destroyed. Thank God. But every Sunday, get up in the church again. There they go. There they go. Let the Antichrist come in, take hold of the service, and run with the service. And people are absolutely dumb to it. No Holy Spirit, no truth, a system. I'm telling you this. I'm telling you this. The house will be soon on fire. People say, oh, you know, you, you become a scarecrow preacher. No, 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 no. This is reality. This is warning. Jesus did not lie. The house of God will be on fire soon. That's warning number six. Number six, the fire of destruction is coming. The consuming fire of God is coming to the church. We are living in the 75th year of the final generation. A judgment of fire has been measured out to the last day church. And our chance to escape this fire is very, very slim. And for us not to be consumed by this fire, of course, yeah, by this fire, we would have to take the way of escape now. Yeah. Today is the 18th. Next Sunday, the 25th, I'm going to bring the final warning. And that will begin to open up your eyes as to what we need to do. And then on March the 3rd, God willing, I'm going to sit here by the grace of God and I'm going to show you the pathway, how to escape, how to escape the fire judgment of God that is coming on the church soon. I'm look at one more time here quickly. Hebrews 12, 25. See to it that you do not refuse to listen to him who is speaking to you now. For if those sons of Israel did not escape, when they refused to listen to him who warned them on earth, that's from the mountaintop. How much less will we escape? Israel did not escape the judgment because Israel refused to listen and obey what God was saying from the mountaintop. And since Israel did not escape, but their disobedience and sin caused them to die, some at the mountain and the rest of them the next 40 years in the wilderness. And you would think, once again, you would think that with the church now, it would be much easier, and much lighter judgment. And much easier to get away from it. And it's not a big deal. But it is the opposite. This is what so disturbs me. The intensity of verse 25. Anybody wants to question this and say, well, you know, can't be that bad. You cannot ignore verse 25. Verse 25 shows you how urgently, how serious, and how devastating this fire judgment of God is going to be on the church. Because since Israel had little opportunity to escape it, we have less of a chance 
to escape the fire judgment of God that is coming on the church in these last days. We have less of a chance. Oh my God. How much less will we escape if we turn our backs on him who warns us now from heaven? How much less chance do we have? You know, it's so frustrating me sometimes. You know, watch some Christian TV on television. They all talk about the fire guard is here. Come get some. The fire of God. You know how much the church knows about the fire of God? Sweet blow or nothing. You know how much the church knows about the power of the fire of God? Sweet blow or nothing. You know how much the church knows about what's coming? Sweet blow or nothing. Absolutely nothing. And here I sit and I chew my nails. My wife was talking about, you know, you get tired. Sometimes I sit there and I say, Lord, this is this is not right. This is not right. Weariness. And the concern, the burden. The burden. Because by the grace of God, my wife and I, we are leaders. We are leaders in the church. That's why, why the Lord gave us this assignment. But you see, we also tune into what I call American Christianity. If you don't have a big building with, with a television station and five cameras in the building, you're not of God. Let me tell you this. The greatest things that God ever did happened with a prophet in the desert, with Jesus in the desert, and nobody around. Because our system of judging things is so stupid and cockeyed. That when we look at a small ministry, nobody would look at that and say, oh, maybe God would say something to this. But they go to where all the limelight is and where people get an easy message and they play church and the music is so awesome and the singers are so great and the building is so beautiful. By the way, that building's coming down. I know you're going to hate it. You must well start hating it now. All those beautiful cathedrals, everything, they're all coming down. Because they're part of the religious and historical junk. They're coming down. Everything is going to be consumed. The house is on fire. Today's warning, number six. Warning for what is now ahead. In the name of Jesus, by the grace of God, the house of God will soon be on fire. A true fire. A literal fire. The fire of God that will come and consume things. How do we know this is a literal fire? Because we always make something... Oh, well, that can't be literal. You know, that's, that's symbolic. It's just symbolic. You know, it's not symbolic because it's going to burn everything to smithering pieces. He's going to torch everything with the flames and the fire of God until nothing remains. It's not spiritual. It's real fire, true fire, fire, burning fire, consuming fire, and it will burn through the church. And many Christians are going to die. Well, why don't you do something about it? Dear God, send me a few million dollars. I'll get on television. I'll start uh, uh, warning everybody. I'll get my own TV station. And I'll talk to the whole world. I'll say, church, 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 church. you got to hear me. We don't have that. we we got to do this the best with what we have. And the Lord said to me, it's not your problem if people... Well, God's people will allow me to lead them. I will lead them to this ministry and they'll find the truth. And they'll find the way of escape. Verse 25 here is talking about the way of escape. And on March the 3rd, by the grace of God, I will show you anybody who's a Christian who at all has any desire, any interest, any hope of escaping this judgment that's on the doorstep. On March the 3rd, I'm going to lay it out. And we can do it together on the air. And then we've got to keep walking in the light of it so that we can escape. We have less of a chance to escape than Israel did in the wilderness. The time period is correct. It is now one last shaking. It's the church era. It's not the tribulation or the thousand year reign of Christ. It's right here at the end of the church era. This is happening. Paul wrote this to the church. All other things are written in the epistles. First Peter 4, 17, the judgment will begin at the house of God. Which judgment? The judgment that must remove all evil from the church. 
You say evil? Well, yeah. It's just as much evil in the churches in the world. The way people act, the way people are. I remember those days of the revival days in the 90s. And I would teach a true Christianity called Holy Ghost Christianity. And I would come against religious Christianity. And Christians would get mad at me. Some of the pastors would get mad at me. I saw them look right in the, in the Bible. Yeah, yeah, but you know, we, 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 you know, we got to focus on Jesus. You focus on Jesus spiritually in your heart. You focus your lifestyle on Holy Spirit. And they would attack me. You would see the ugliest demons in the church come out and attack you. <laughs> A few times I was almost attacked physically. Well, Paul was. The people that came after Paul and stoned him were Christians who had gone back to their religious and traditional junk of Judaism. Go read it for yourself. Go study for yourself. The people that came after Paul opposed him and tried to kill him and in the end stoned him. They were Christians. Christians, Jewish Christians, people. Some of them were the ones that were born again on the day of Pentecost when 3,000 came to the Lord. Some of those people, 15, 20 years later, they're coming after Paul and they stoned him, want to stone him to death. Why? Because the Jews did exactly what, what we do in humanity. We we'll always go back to our old vomit. Delivered from Judaism. Brought into Christ and eternal life and the new salvation and the new covenant. Yet then they went back to their own vomit. Of dead Judaism and then came against Paul and attacked him. You know, I don't, I've never had in my years anybody that I can tell that really attacked me or my person or my ministry that was not a Christian. All the attacks that I've suffered for what I do here every Sunday and the isolation has come to me from the church. And it's the church. That has persecuted me and my wife. And 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 have rejected us, tried to shut us down. There was a pastor I preached for in the 90s. And only 2000 somewhere, 2005, I was at a meeting and he was there. And I started to talk to him. He said, Man, good to see you. And talk and talk and talk and talk. I said, um, I'm surprised we have such a we had such a great revival at your church that. I'm surprised that you that you hadn't called me back to come back. He said, well, I was talking to someone, someone. He said, you know, Gabriel has changed. So you, should, you should not have him back at the church. You need to listen to this. A pastor that said to this pastor, whom I preach for, no, 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 you should not have Gabriel back at your church. See, there's no fear of God in the church. There's no fear for God. There's no respect for the true ministries of God. And I've told people this before, and I'm going to say it again. Things that people said against me in the 90s and 2000s, they can't do it anymore. If you, anybody, raise their hand against me in judgment and speak evil of me, from this time on forward, you'll die. You can be a pew member. You can be a apostle. doesn't matter. You'll die. The fire of God will soon be in the house. And will consume everything that is in the house that cannot survive the shaking and the burning. 99% of what the church lives on and lives by is religious and historical joke. All of it. Most of our celebrations, the doctrines, the principles, the activities, the things the church does. By the time the fire of God has gone through the church and removed everything, that is historical and religious junk. <laughs> There'll be nothing left. It's to start over from scratch. Born again? Yes. Filled with Holy Spirit still? Yeah. But start over. We'll start over. Because he's coming to remove your favorite doctrines, your historical junk. I'm not talking about somebody else out there. I'm talking about the church. You and I. We're all full of historical junk, religious junk, and we think it's the truth. I tell you what, since 2017, how God opened my eyes. Before, I mean, things I saw before that and preached before that. But even since then, how the Lord opened my eyes to things 
in the church world, you, you walk into a church and 99% of what they're going to do on Sunday morning is blasphemously to Jesus. It's unbelievable. All of this is coming down. The house is coming down. The house is going to be torched and God will continue to burn until all the religious and historical junk are chewed up by the fire, consumed, removed, obliterated, and vanished after that. This is a warning. This is a warning to every born again child of God. You must prepare yourself right now because the outpouring of the fire of God, the consuming fire of God, and this event of judgment in the church is on its way to us now. Next Sunday, February 25th, I'm going to bring the seventh and final warning. And on March the 3rd, we're going to get back to verse 25 here. It says, how much less will we escape? And we are going to find the escape route. We're going to discover the road of escape. And I'll lay it out in front of everybody. We're going to even pray and walk through it together. And then I'll put a dish right here on my desk. And I'm going to wash my hands here in front of everybody. because. In the months to come this year and into next year, many Christians are going to be hit by the fire of God and they will die. Yes, they go to heaven, but they lose out on all God had for, for them and their full destiny here in these final days. I'm going to wash my hands and I'm going to call Father God, the Lord Jesus, and the Holy Spirit as my witness here that I have declared the full counsel of God to you. That I've made available to the body of Christ the full counsel of God, warning that the house is going to be on fire. That the consuming fire of God is about to hit the church. Anybody thinks we're dumb, stupid, whatever. I will wash my hands here on March the 3rd. And I will declare to you and before the Lord. I call Father God, the judge of all, as my witness that I have in seven messages from January 7th. That I have sounded seven warnings. I have given the alarm seven times. Of this event of the consuming fire of God that's on its way to the church. I will wash my hands here that I'm innocent of the life and of the death and of the destruction and of the judgment of millions of Christians that is about to come. I will walk into a place where God will justify me, not for me personally, but that I brought the full counsel, the full message of God to you in Jesus' name. 